Hello everyone, Lytro Storm here, and today we'll be making the GT version to What If Goku Never Hit His Head. So as I normally do with these GT What Ifs, it's just going to continue after Z instead of Super. So if you haven't already, you need to go watch parts 1 through 8, which will be linked in both the description and comments section. A short recap of our main changes before approaching this version will be provided now. So essentially, Gohan never trained. Like, ever. Raditz turned good, Bardock and Gine were both revived, and Kakarot never died with Cell. This means there is no Super Saiyan 3, Fusion, and also no instant transmission because Kakarot didn't go to Yardrat either. Also, yeah, his name's Kakarot. Piccolo unlocked the ultimate form instead of Gohan and killed Super Buu, and Bardock also has a daughter who is named Sella and is roughly the same age as Trunks. And that's the recap. Oh yeah, also, Goten is a bit older, he's like 4 years older than Trunks. So with that being said, we're just gonna get straight into the video now. So before we delve into GT, we first have to discuss the end of Z. Basically, 10 years have passed since Majin Buu's attack, so let's see what our gang has been doing. Kakarot, Raditz, Bardock, and Piccolo have been doing their typical training together, and half of the time they are joined by Sela and Goten when not dealing with their own lives. They're gonna keep up their own training, but, you know, they kind of have their own lives to deal with. At the same time, Vegeta trains with his son, Trunks, who's been trying to balance out his normal life with his training as well. The tournament would still occur, with Krillin also showing up this time. He's got a son with him, around the same age as Pan and Bra. This is because he never got to marry Android 18 since she was dead, so he trained in his off time and met a new woman instead. If you want to pinpoint who exactly it might be, it might be someone like Suno or Launch or whatever, whatever you guys want, uh, but basically it doesn't really matter, it's just a random woman. His son is going to be named Chestnut since that's what Krillin means, and Marin as well. He would have trained his son with the help of Yamcha, so that's pretty neat. But the tournament would still end with Kakarot meeting Oob, who instead of being reincarnated from Kid Buu, would be from Super Buu. But basically, Kakarot takes him back to his place to train with him and his family. The reason for not going off on his own with him is because he knows that this is the superior way to train and he's been doing this for the longest time, and plus he's got his guardian duties as well. Pan also decides to join their training since she wanted to train with her grandfather in canon and here she's actually going to get the chance to. After the 5 years have passed, we would see a much stronger Kakarot and Oob. The same can be said for Piccolo, Bardock, and Raditz. The three are all really powerful, with Piccolo's ultimate form rivaling Super Saiyan 2 Kakarot. Following their strength would be Vegeta, who's been training on his own, with Trunks hardly involved. Not only does he have his Capsule Corp duties, but he also currently has a wife and child. The wife would be Sela, and their child would be a baby girl named Tights, since Tights, Bulma's sister, doesn't exist in GT. We would also see Goten having a baby boy with some random girl, as he was over four years older in this timeline, so it would make sense if he's actually going out, because in canon he was actually going out and dating, so it would make sense. The kid would be a year older than Tights, and would be named Pick, since Goten held a deep respect for Piccolo due to being involved in his life a lot of the time. Also, Krillin's son, Chestnut, would be training with both his father and Yamcha, and also occasionally Tenshinhan and Chiaotzu. He is skilled with the sword, and has most of the main techniques from the four Earthlings. He's been trying to get a handle on the Kaioken since Yamcha has it in this timeline. He's got more than enough strength to do it, but the strain on such a young body is quite difficult to handle. He is only 9, so it's kind of like a GT Goku thing with Super Saiyan 3. He's incredibly powerful, however, he's not quite on the level of Pan. And that perfectly transitions me into talking about Pan's power, and she has also unlocked Super Saiyan 2 during this time of training with so many other Saiyans. She didn't slack like she did in canon, she's actually being there training. Anyway, that's enough catching up with the gang, so now let's get into the first saga. Or, I would if there was a saga to get into. You see, with Piccolo being the Guardian of Earth, He's not going to let Pilaf get anywhere near the lookout. So nobody wishes for Kakarot to be a child, which means there's no quest in space either. So instead, our gang would continue to train in peace, possibly participating in another new tournament. Here we'd see our old gang reunite, with the kids also bonding as well. So what would happen going forward is going to take us into space. Dr. Miyu would finish Baby and Lord Lude, and they would be fully powered up. These guys wanted the Black Star Dragon Balls, and they were tracking them as well in the original show. So if they're all located on one planet, they're all going to fully prepare before they make one big assault on Earth. Once the tournament is over with, Kakarot and the others would sense large energies in the sky. They would look up to see spaceships and would prepare to fight. Once landed, Mew steps out of his ship and tells them to surrender the Black Star Dragon Balls or they will have to take them by force. Piccolo, being the guardian of Earth, would tell him no, and so Mew would then step back inside, and after that we would see Cardinal Muchi, Lord Lude, the Sigma Force, and General Rildo all rush out of the ship and charge in to attack. At this point, RZ fighters are going to be able to handle these guys easily. 
Oob, Pan, and Chestnut would take out Muchi, with Lude being fought by Goten, Trunks, and Sela. At the same time, Piccolo, Raditz, and Bardock beat up the Sigma Force, and Kakarot would be the one to scrap with General Rildo. Basically, what you need to know is that this fight is gonna be a breeze. I mean, these guys were all pretty fodder in the original GT, but our Z fighters are much stronger than they were in that version. Muchi's whip would then come back to life, the Sigma Force would fuse, and General Rildo goes into its final form, but it doesn't even matter in the slightest. All it means is that our guys are gonna have to try a little bit harder and power up a little bit more. Kakarot would have General Rildo on the ground, and that's when he would begin to scream out. His eyes then appeared to change as he now attacked Kakarot once more, however this time more fiercely and a bit stronger as well. He was swiftly beaten still, but something was different. He was being controlled by Baby. And so as Kakarot is about to kill Rildo, Baby barely escapes from his body, leaving Rildo's body to, you know, just get turned into ash. The gang regroups, with all of them celebrating their victory and then returning back to their normal lives as Baby watches from afar. The mutant waits a few hours to act, but ends up taking over many average people throughout the day. He then eventually sets his sights on Goten. He's walking home to see his wife and child, and so he is now the perfect target. Baby sends multiple goons to attack him, but Goten is going to smack them all pretty easily like he did in the show. This leads to Baby approaching him himself, and Goten would be able to stand against him. However, once things get rough for Baby and Goten transforms, that's when he makes his attack. Baby takes over Goten's body and looks through all of his memories. At that point, he knows where his home is, and so he sends his goons to take over his wife and child. And using Goten's body, he's gonna go for a bigger prize. Trunks and Sela are both at their house, tending to their child, when Goten walks in. He shoves Trunks and tells him to fight him, and so Trunks would be confused. Why was his best friend attacking him like this? Sela asks Goten to leave, and he backhands her to the ground. At this point, Trunks then shoves him into the wall and says, let's go. The three Saiyans then leave to the wasteland and proceed to fight. Baby Goten would then take on both Sela and Trunks, as Sela wasn't going to sit idly by and let her husband fight alone. Of course, Goten had been doing more training than the two of them had, and he was already older as well, so he had a head start. When combined with the power Baby has, he's going to be able to handle the two of them with a lot of difficulty. This leads to a really close fight that would be super cool to watch. Eventually, Trunks and Sela would both go Super Saiyan, and that's when Goten does as well. He then manages to outmaneuver them and goes for Sela first. He blasts her onto the ground and Baby begins taking over Trunks. Sela screams out not knowing what was happening, and now both Goten and Trunks set their sight on the women. She tries escaping, but Baby comes out of their bodies and protrudes in front of them. He smiles before then taking over her as well. Baby was building up his Saiyan ranks quite nicely, with three really strong ones. Two half-breeds and one full Saiyan in Sela. He sends some more random people he took over to get Gohan and Videl, as the two of them are both pretty fodder. They didn't really need much to take them out. And meanwhile, the three main ones would begin heading toward Capsule Corp. They do try to stay suppressed, as they know Piccolo would be on guard duty as well, so they don't want to alert him. They eventually arrive at Capsule Corp and find out that Vegeta isn't there, so they take Bulma over and look through her memories to see that Vegeta is on a drive with Bra. Baby flies out later that night and proceeds to approach Vegeta as Trunks. Vegeta isn't able to stop the car in time, and so he hits him, launching him across the road. He then gets out and walks over to see if Trunks is alright, and he would stand up and say that it's fine, before then punching him. However, Vegeta would then catch this attack, saying that no son of his would be hurt by a car. He then proceeds to punch Trunks across the road, and tells Bra to go home. Now the father and son would then square off, but Vegeta is going to be having the edge, and this leads to both of them going Super Saiyan and Goten and Sela arriving. And with that, the three then proceed to blitz Vegeta and take him over as well. However, Vegeta isn't going to be the main host, so he doesn't get the white hair in the big power amp. As the four attempt to move on, Piccolo would step in front of them. He had caught wind of their fight a few hours ago, but they left before he could get there, and now he's got them in his sights. He'll be the one to set the record straight and get them to leave Earth, one way or another. The Namekian then proceeds to do battle with the four in his ultimate form. We saw how Baby, Gohan, and Goten did against Goku. Both of them got wiped, even in Super Saiyan, by Goku's base form. And without Vegeta's host amp from Baby, Earth's Guardian is just going to be tossing all of these guys around. However, he isn't able to kill them. And so, Baby is able to take control over him as well. Now they've got one of the strongest people on Earth. There's no way to lose anymore and so they begin their true assault. The next morning, Kakarot, Bardock, Pan, and Oob awake to see all of Baby's new minions at their doorstep. They are now surrounded, and so Baby sends his main guys against them. 
Kakarot fights Piccolo, Raditz fights Vegeta, Bardock fights Goten, Pan fights Sella, and Oob fights Trunks. This, unfortunately, is gonna lead to Kakarot being taken over by Baby, as he was the strongest Saiyan. Now, this may seem a bit confusing to you guys, as Baby didn't want to take him over in the show, because he had a vendetta against him for messing with him before. However, the simple explanation is that he doesn't have that here. Kakarot never went into space and blew up his whole thing and, you know, messed with him, so of course he's just gonna take the strongest Saiyan that he can. He fully absorbs Kakarot and makes him the main host. This gives him the white hair and the big power amp as well. He now attempts to kill the rest of them with a large ball of energy as he doesn't need them anymore, but Bardock and Raditz attempt to hold it back. Bardock tells Pan and Oob to get out of here while they still can, and so Oob slams his fist through the ground to create a hole. He then rapidly attacks the ground, you know, just punching it over and over and over again, and then grabs Pan and jumps in. Raditz smirks at the brilliance of the boy, and would then try to hold back the attack, as it was now too late for himself and his father. The two are now overtaken by the blast, but they were then saved by Shin and Kabito. The two go through the whole game thing that Goku did originally and eventually make their way to Supreme Kai's planet. Meanwhile, Baby would be using the Black Star Dragon Balls to create a new planet. This would be named Sufuru and would be home to his new race. And so, as the entire planet is turned into his army, they then prepare to leave on a giant spaceship. The only remaining survivors are Pan, Oob, and Chestnut, as they are all presumed dead. Chestnut had escaped due to his father and Yamcha protecting him, and the three kids then come up with a plan to infiltrate Baby's new planet, and so they would do so. They enter Baby's ship in secret and take the ride with him. At this point, Bardock and Raditz have already talked with the Kais about what to do, and their only hope is to let the Elder Kai awaken their potential. Bardock allows Raditz to go first, and so the Elder Kai then does his dance. Shin and Kabito decide to recruit Bardock to get the sacred water, as that would be the only way to reverse Baby's control. Much time would pass, and eventually Pan, Oob, and Chestnut would make themselves known. They attempt to attack the weaker Baby minions, but are still overwhelmed in the end. With no good boo to fuse with, Oob isn't going to be able to become Majub, and so he's going to take the L along with the rest. Back on the land of the Kais, Bardock, Shin, and Kabito have returned, and Bardock looks at the crystal ball and sees his great-granddaughter being beaten, and so, he says that he's gotta go there now. Shin and Kabito agree, as Bardock can distract Baby's goons while they try and undo some of them with the water. The Saiyan tells Raditz to stay there and don't go until the unlock is finished. His son says alright, and so Bardock then leaves with the Kais. The Kais and Bardock arrive on planet Sufuru, and Bardock immediately flies over to fight Baby's goons. He tells him that he should fight one-on-one -on -one like a real Saiyan, however Baby reminds him that he isn't a Saiyan. He would never stoop to such stupidity. At the same time, Shin and Kabito create a large explosion nearby, and Baby Goten, Sella, and Trunks all go after it and get the sacred water splashed onto them. At that point, they then pass out and return back to normal. Meanwhile, Baby Vegeta and Piccolo are both beating down on Bardock, who proved to stand on his own against them, so Baby rewarded him by fighting himself. With Kakarot's body and an amp, it wasn't even gonna be a close fight. He's just gonna toss Bardock around, eventually leaving him on the ground, and at that point, Bardock looks up to the Earth, and begins to transform into an Uzaru. However, he is a golden Uzaru instead of a normal one. Remember that Bardock never lost his tail. The monkey begins rampaging around, but luckily, he had some decent control over the form, and it is then that Baby would just be slamming him around, leading to Bardock controlling the form and going Super Saiyan 4. However, this is nowhere near enough. I'd like to remind you all that Baby Vegeta in his final form was around the level of Golden Uzaru Goku, give or take. He's in that power tier, but he could either be above or below. But normal Vegeta was only a bit stronger than Baby Gohan. The same Baby Gohan that in Super Saiyan got bopped by Goku's base form. Kakarot is much stronger in this timeline, so if he gets the same boost as Baby Vegeta, Super Saiyan 4 is not going to be nearly enough to stop him. He would proceed to easily dismantle Bardock with little effort. Luckily, this fight gave Shin and Kabito enough chance to free the other Z-Fighters from Baby's control, and so they would all arrive and give Bardock their energy. This unlocks Ultra Full Power Super Saiyan 4, but that's still nowhere near enough. He does much better, sure, but all Baby has to do is try a little bit harder. At this point, Raditz knows that he's gotta get in there, and the Elder Kai says that he's right. If all that powering up won't do anything, his unlock isn't going to be any help whatsoever. It's best he goes now, to do whatever he can. And while that may seem stupid, the Elder Kai agrees, and so he hands him his Patara earrings. This is the only way they can beat Baby now. This is the only chance that they have. 
If he fuses with Bardock or maybe even someone else if he can't do that, they should have a better shot. Raditz thanks him and Shin and Kabito teleport him to Planet Sefuru. He appears, attempting to try and fuse with his father, but he just doesn't have an opening to throw him the earring. That's when Vegeta and the others step up saying that they'll buy him some time and they all charge in at Baby and get demolished, leaving our father and son. Raditz goes over to Bardock who is now in base form and gives him the earring. This is their only hope, so now the two fuse, becoming Radok. It's at this point that Radok goes Super Saiyan 4 and begins annihilating Baby. So much so that he has to use his final form, but even then it's still nowhere near close to handle the Patara fusion. And so as he's trying to escape to get to Bulma, Radok would fire a Tyrant Lancer and erase the Sifurian from existence. This does kill Kakarot in the process, but at least their greatest threat is now gone. With that, the Kais begin spreading the sacred water all over the planet, and Piccolo makes a realization. This guy used the Black Star Dragon Balls, which means someone needs to search through space to find them before the Earth explodes. They've got about a year to do so, and so I think Raditz would volunteer. Joining him would be Pan and Chestnut since the parents knew that they'd be safe with Raditz, and so a few days later they begin their journey. Luckily, it doesn't have much interference since Miu and everybody else previously involved are now dead. Meanwhile, Kakarot would arrive on King Kai's planet for the first time and would talk to Piccolo through King Kai. The Namekian says that he should be taken out so that way the Earth never have to suffer because of the Black Star Dragon Balls. However, Kakarot is of course going to refuse his brother's request. He tells him just to give him some time. He'll unlock a new power in the other world in order to protect Earth even better. He got taken over and Bardock achieved Super Saiyan 4. He's been left out of all that and so if he gets the time, he'll gain new strength to stop anything from threatening Earth once again. Piccolo reluctantly agrees, and so Kakarot begins his training in Otherworld. Meanwhile, Vegeta and everyone else would go back to their normal lives and training. Many months would pass, and the group who went off into space would return with the balls. They give them to the Guardian of Earth, Piccolo, who places them in their proper place. Meanwhile in Hell, Mew would meet up with Dr. Jiro, and the two would begin plans on a new android. However, 17 and 18 were both killed, and since they're both here in hell, and Miu knows that there are so many Saiyans, they're gonna make an alternate version of both of them. This would take a bit more time, maybe a few more months, but it would be worth it if it means that they would both get their revenge. And because Kakarot is focused on his training with both King Kai and just Otherworld in general, he wouldn't focus on hell too much. He's gotta keep his promise to his brother Piccolo in order to ensure that he doesn't do anything drastic. And so a year and a half would pass, and suddenly hell would open up. With all the villains pouring out, Kakarot would immediately go to hell to find out what's going on. However, he is met by Frieza and Cell. Miu and Jiro have already left, and they arrive on Earth with Super 17 and Super 18. They've already fused with their counterparts since it would be best to combine them and get them into their strongest forms before they have to go to Earth if they have the chance. So now the two super androids would rampage across the Earth and would eventually come across our Z fighters. Vegeta, Bardock, Raditz, and Piccolo would all step up to fight the two, cycling through their forms. This forces Bardock to bring out Super Saiyan 4, but by this point the androids have absorbed so much energy from the Z Fighters. This means that a Super Saiyan 4 Bardock wouldn't be enough to win this alone. However, luckily, Vegeta had prepared for this. After seeing Super Saiyan 4 and the power of Baby Kakarot up close, he knew that he had to gain some more strength. And so he now calls Bulma on his phone. She then arrives with the Blutzwave machine and proceeds to shoot them all at him. This allows for him to go Golden Uzaru and then Super Saiyan 4. Now with both of them together, they'd be able to trash the two androids with little difficulty, and luckily they're smart enough after their long fight not to fire a giant blast to let them absorb it like Goku did in canon. Or, you know, it's GT so it's not canon, but you get what I mean. Instead, they're both going to make final attacks on the two and kill both of them at the same time. It is then that Kakarot would arrive, but he's a bit late. He reunites with everyone still, having a day to return thanks to Baba. They ask if he has unlocked his new power as Piccolo had told him about that, and he would say yes. He'll show them later though. Preferably after the Earth is wished back to normal, and so they would try to do that, summoning Shenron, but it is instead a Shadow Dragon who informs them of what's to come, and that they need to take down all the Shadow Dragons. The crew agrees to split up, with each group being able to handle most of the Shadow Dragons on their own. It is then that Kakarot would be approached by Nuova Shenron. However, he is going to be able to beat him up in base form. So Nuova powers up, and Kakarot knows that he needs to do the same. He charges up all of his energy, and goes Super Saiyan 3. 
That is the power-up he learned in his year and a half in Otherworld. And because he did that type of training in Otherworld, his base was just far superior to everyone else's, so when he's in Super Saiyan 3, consider it around the same power as his original Super Saiyan 4 self, give or take. This allows him to fight Nuova before Ice Shenron comes in and blindsides him. But luckily, Bardock comes in with the save and kills Ice with Super Saiyan 4. Nuova then gets shot in the back by Sin Shenron, and now our final bout would begin. Kakarot and Bardock attempt to go against him, but they're both just getting finessed by the Shadow Dragon. It is then that they would do a combined beam attack with Bardock using a x10 Tyrant Lancer. He fires this, nearly killing Sin, but luckily, he survives and absorbs the Dragon Balls. Vegeta now arrives using Super Saiyan 4 as well, but the three strongest Saiyans won't be nearly enough to match Omega Shenron. They get beaten down, and that's when Vegeta comes up with the plan. There's no way they're winning this, so he calls Bulma. She arrives with the Blutzwave machine, and Vegeta tells Kakarot that he and Bardock will buy him some time. Kakarot thanks his rival, and the Blutz machine would now hit him, making him go Golden Uzaru. He manages to control the form with the help of Pan and the others, and he is now in Super Saiyan 4. Now real quick, Golden Uzaru is a lot stronger than Super Saiyan 3, and Super Saiyan 4 is a lot stronger than that. So if Kakarot is already on the same level as his Super Saiyan 4 self when using Super Saiyan 3, he's going to be monstrous when he gets the actual form himself. And so, with this power, he proceeds to fight Omega one-on-one. -on -one. The two go at it for a while, both matching each other pretty evenly, however, Bardock knows a way to get stronger. Once again, Vegeta and him will buy him some time, and Piccolo will also do the same. And now, he's gonna get energy from the other Saiyans. And so, Omega is now terrified of the ultra-full power Super Saiyan 4. The Shadow Dragon would decide to blow up Earth, sending a massive ball of minus energy down. However, Kakarot would not let that stand. He's way stronger than him now, and so he charges up a Kamehameha. He then fires it and overpowers the ball entirely. This kills the Shadow Dragon, and the gang would now celebrate with Kakarot smiling. He thanks Piccolo for letting him go into the other world, as he wouldn't have had that base form strength if he didn't train there. Piccolo told his brother that he was welcome, and that's when Shenron arrived. He told Kakarot that it was time to go, as the Dragon Balls needed to be purified. Kakarot steps up for this, but Piccolo says that he'll go. He was planning to die to get rid of the Black Star Dragon Balls, so if he can purify these ones, it should be him. Kakarot wants to fight this, but he knows his brother has already made up his mind. The two share a hug before Piccolo tells everyone goodbye, and then he leaves with Shenron. After that, Kakarot knows that it's time to go back to the other world, however, that's when the Kais would appear. The Elder Kai decides to be generous and gives him his life, as he's not really using it. They can't use the Namek Balls, as that would go against what they've learned, which is not to be selfish with the Dragon Balls. And so Kakarot thanks the Kai and returns to life, going on to protect Earth and train the next generation. At some point during the 100 year time skip, he, Raditz, Vegeta, and Bardock would all pass on. Goten's child, Pick, would end up having a kid himself, who would also have a child. The same can be said for Sela and Trunks' daughter, Tights. Pan would have married Oob, as she had many years to bond and train with him in this timeline. And lastly, Bra and Chestnut would have been together as well. So at the end of the 100 year time skip, we would have Kakarot Jr., Vegeta Jr., Sela Jr., and Raditz Jr. It is cool to note that Sela Jr. would be around a 10th Saiyan. This is because Sela was a full-blooded Saiyan and had a child with Trunks a half Saiyan. This makes their kid three-fourths, and the kid after that would be a little over a fourth, so by the end, they would be around a 9th, 10th, or 11th. Meanwhile, all the other ones are 1 16th. But luckily, some of the gang's parents would be around and would be able to train them. And now that the 100 years were up, Piccolo would make his return. Not as a ghost, but as the real thing. Pan would look up to him and see him in the crowd, and eventually would approach him, and he would approach all of the young Saiyans. He states that his name is Piccolo, the Guardian of Earth, and he'll be training them. And that is where this series ends. So now that we've covered GT, what if Goku never hit his head is officially done. I hope you all have enjoyed both versions of the story as I really like this ending to be honest. And go on to keep on watching my content because it's, you know, really good. I would really appreciate it as this was really fun to make. But as always, tell me if you like this part, comment your request for future videos, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, have a great day.